Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah please with him, said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, saying, Actions are only by intentions, and every man has only that which he intended. Whoever's emigration is for Allah and his Messenger, then his emigration is for Allah and his Messenger. Whoever's emigration is for some worldly gain, which he can acquire, or a woman he will marry, then his immigration is for that which he emigrated. Bukhari and Muslim عن أمير المؤمنين أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأتي ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه Commentary the hadith indicates that intention is the measure for rendering actions true, so that where intention is sound, action is sound, and where it is corrupt, then action is corrupt. Wherever there is action accompanied by intention, then there are three states. First, that one does it out of fear of Allah, exalted is he, and this is the worship of slaves. Second, that one does it seeking the garden and reward, and this is the worship of traders. Third. That one does it out of modesty and shame before Allah, exalted is he, discharging the right of service and discharging the duty of gratitude, seeing oneself and along with that one's heart is fearful, because one does not know whether one's actions are accepted or not. This is the worship of free people, and the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, indicated it when Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said to him, when he stood at night until his two feet swallowed, Messenger of Allah, why do you impose this upon yourself whilst Allah has forgiven you your earlier errors and any later ones? He said, Shall I not be a grateful slave? If it is said, Is it better to worship with fear or with hope? It must be said. Al Ghazali said, May Allah show mercy to him. Worship with hope is better because hope causes love and fear causes despair. There are three divisions with respect to those who are sincere. And you must know that sincerity is exposed to the defect of conceit, and whoever is conceited about his action, then his action is invalid, and it is invalid if he is arrogantly proud. The second state is that one does that seeking both in this world and the next life. One of the people of knowledge took the position that, in that case, his action is rejected, and he sought a proof of that from his words. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. In the lordly hadith, hadith Qudsi, Allah, exalted as he, says, I am the most independent of partners, so whoever does an action in which he makes other than me a partner, then I am free of it. This was the position that Al-Harif Al-Muhasibi took in the book ar riyah He said, Sincerity is that you intend him by obedience to him, and that you do not intend any other than him. Showing off is of two types. One of the two is that one does not intend by obedience to him anything but people. The second is that one intends people and the Lord of people, and both of these invalidate actions. The Hafid Abu Nu'aym transmitted these statements from some of the first communities in al hilya One of them took a proof of that. From his words, exalted is he, the compeller, the supremely great, glory be to Allah, above all they associate with him. For just as he is too great to have a wife and a child and a partner, he is too great to accept an action in which other than him is made a partner. He, exalted is he, is greater and great and supremely great. As Samra Qandi said, may Allah show mercy to him, whatever is done for the sake of Allah is accepted, and whatever is done for the sake of people is rejected. 
An example of that is whoever prays duhr, for example, and intends by it to discharge the duty of what Allah has made obligatory upon him. But he leavens its parts and its recitation and makes its organisation beautiful for the sake of people. The basic part of the prayer is acceptable, but its length and its beautification for the sake of people are unacceptable because he intends people by them. Sheikh Isuddin ibn Abd salam was asked about one who prays and lengthens his prayer because of people, and he said, I hope that his action will not be invalid. All of this is in the case where the association of partners occurs in attributes of the action. However, if it happens in the source of the action, so that one prays the obligatory prayer for the sake of Allah, exalted is he, and for the sake of people, then one's prayer is not accepted because of the association of partners in the very source of the action. Just as showing off can be in an action, it can be in the abandonment of an action. For Dale ibn Iyad said, leaving an action because of people is showing off, and doing an action because of people is associating a partner with Allah, and sincerity is that Allah should protect one from both of them. The meaning of what he said, may Allah show mercy to him, is that whoever resolves on an act of worship and leaves it for fear that people may see it, then it is a form of showing off, since he gave up an action because of people. However, if he gave it up in order to pray it in solitude, this is recommended and desirable, unless it is an obligatory prayer, or an obligatory zakah, or he is a man of knowledge upon whom people model themselves, for being open about an act of worship in these cases is better. Just as showing off invalidates action, so does seeking a good report, which is that one does an act for Allah in solitude, and then later tells people what one did. He said, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Whoever makes others hear of his actions, Allah will make others hear of him. And whoever makes a show of his actions, Allah will make a show of him. People of knowledge say that if he is a man of knowledge upon whom people model themselves, and he mentions it in order to encourage the listeners to action, so that they might act in accordance with it, then there is no harm in it. al Zabani said, may Allah show mercy to him. The one who prays needs four qualities so that his prayer will be raised up to Allah. Presence of the heart, witnessing of the intellect, stillness in the basic elements and submission of the limbs. Whoever prays without the presence of heart, then he is distracted, and whoever prays without the witnessing of the intellect is forgetful. Whoever prays without humility of the limbs is mistaken. Whoever prays without stillness in the basic elements is uncouth. And whoever prays with all these elements has fulfilled the prayer. By his saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, actions are only by intentions. He means acts of obedience, aside from acts which are permissible. Al-Harif al-Muhasibi said, Sincerity is not relevant for permitted actions, because they are not acts of drawing near. Nor do they lead to drawing near. For example, raising up buildings for no higher purpose, rather for the purpose of frivolity. However, if it is for a purpose such as mosques, aqueducts and ribats, then they are desirable and recommended. He said, There is no sincerity in an act which is forbidden, nor in something frowned upon, such as someone who looks at that which is not permitted for him to look at, claiming that he looks at it in order to reflect upon the workmanship of Allah. Exalted is he. For example, one who looks at a beardless youth. There is no sincerity in this. Indeed, there is no act of drawing near to Allah in it at all. He said, Truthfulness in the attribute of the slave is in the matching of the secret and the public, the outward and the inward. Truthfulness is realised by realising all of the stations and states, so much so that sincerity needs truthfulness, and truthfulness does not need anything, since the reality of sincerity is intending Allah, exalted is he, by the act of worship. One may intend Allah by the prayer, but be neglectful of the presence of the heart in it. Truthfulness is intending Allah, exalted is he, by the act of worship, along with the presence of the heart with him. Every true one is sincere, but not every sincere one is true. That is the meaning of union and separation, since he is separated from other than Allah and united with the presence by Allah. It is the meaning of isolation from what is other than Allah 
an adornment with the presence before Allah, glorious and exalted is he. His saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, actions are only by intentions, carries the possibilities of the soundness of actions are only, or the rendering of actions sound, or the acceptance of actions, or the perfection of actions. This was what Imam Abu Hanifa took, may Allah be merciful to him. One excludes from actions those of the category of removal, such as removing dirt, returning property obtained through extortion and loans, conveying a present, etc. For the soundness of these actions does not depend upon the intention having been made authentic. Rather, the reward for them depends upon having intended them as acts of drawing near. For example, one who feeds his animal, if he does so in obedience to the command of Allah, exalted is he, he will be rewarded. But if he intends by it preservation of his wealth, then there is no reward for that. As al qarafi said, the exception to that case is the horse of a man fighting jihad. For when he ties it up in the way of Allah, if it drinks and he did not intend to give it water, he will still be rewarded for that. As is narrated in Sahih Bukhari. And similarly for one's wife. Also, locking the door and extinguishing the lamp upon going to sleep. If one intends by them obedience to the command of Allah, one is rewarded. And if one intends something else, then one will not. You must know that intention is a word for purpose. It is said, may Allah intend good for you, i.e. may he purpose it for you. Intention in the Sharia is to purpose a thing coupled with the doing of it. If one purposes it and then does it, later it is resolved. Intention is made a part of the Sharia in order to distinguish customary actions from acts of worship, or to distinguish one act of worship from another. An example of the former is sitting in the mosque, which is customarily intended for rest, but it could also be meant as worship, if the intention is for itikaf. That which distinguishes custom from worship is intention. Similarly, one customarily intends by a complete washing of the body to clean the body, but also the intention can be an act of worship, i.e. a rustle. That which distinguishes between these two cases is the intention, which the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, indicated when he was asked about the man who fought in order to show off. The man who fought defensively, and the man who fought courageously. As to which of them is fighting in the way of Allah, exalted is he. He said, Whoever fights so that the word of Allah should be the uppermost, then he is in the way of Allah, exalted is he. An example of the latter, which is distinguishing between the different degrees of worship, is one who prays four rakah, by which he could intend the midday prayer or sunnah prayers, and that which distinguishes these two is the intention. Similarly, freeing a slave can be intended as an expiation for a wrongdoing and for other purposes, such as expiation of vows which have been broken, etc. And here, that which distinguishes them is the intention. Respecting his words, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. There is only for each man that which he intends. There is an indication that it is not permitted to deputize for someone else in acts of worship, nor appoint someone as an agent for the same intention. The exceptions in this case are the distribution of zakah and sacrifice of an Eid animal, for appointing someone as an agent is permissible in both these cases in the intention and to slaughter an animal for Eid, and to distribute the zakah along with the capability to make the intention. In the Hajj, it is not permitted to appoint one to go in one's place, along with having the capability of doing it oneself. Paying a debt. As for when it is for one purpose, it does not need an intention. But if it is for two purposes, such as someone who owes two thousands, one of which is for something he has pawned, and he pays a thousand and says, I have paid it for the pawned item, then he is right. If he did not intend anything at the time he paid, he may form and declare the intention after that and make it for whatever he wishes. There is no other intention which we can delay until after the action, and yet it remains sound except here. His saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Whoever's emigration is for Allah and his messenger, then his immigration is for Allah and his messenger. Whoever's immigration is for some worldly gain which he can acquire, or a woman he will marry, then his immigration is for that for which he emigrated.
The root of emigration is flight and abandoning. The term hijrah is used for a number of matters. First, the emigration of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, from Mecca to Abyssinia, when those who associated partners with Allah were harming the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. So they fled from it to the Nagus. This was five years after the sending of the Messenger, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. al he said, the second immigration was from Mecca to Medina, and it was thirteen years after the sending of the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. It was obligatory on every Muslim in Mecca to emigrate to the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, in Medina. A group said without qualification that emigration was obligatory from Mecca to Medina. However, this is not the unqualified case, since there is no particular virtue in Medina, and what was obligatory was the emigration of the Messenger of Allah. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. Qadi Abu Bakr ibn Arabi said, The people of knowledge, may Allah be pleased with them, divided travel in the earth into flight and search, and the former subdivides into six subdivisions. First, going out from the abode of war to the abode of Islam, and this remains until the day of resurrection. That which ceased with the conquest of Mecca, according to his words, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. There is no immigration after the conquest. It was the immigration to the Messenger of Allah. May Allah bless him and grant him peace where he was. Second, leaving the people of innovation. Ibn al-Qasim said, I heard Malik say, It is not permitted for anyone to remain in a land in which the first community are being cursed. Third, leaving a land where the haram is predominant, since it is obligatory on every Muslim to seek the halal. Fourth, fleeing from harm to one's body. It is one of the bounties of Allah that he makes an allowance for that. If one fears for oneself in a place, then Allah permits one to leave it. Fleeing with oneself will save one from that peril. The first to do that was Ibrahim, peace be upon him, when he feared his people and said, I am leaving this place to follow the pleasures of my Lord. He, exalted as he says, telling of Musa, peace be upon him. So he left there fearful and on his guard. Fifth, leaving unhealthy cities from fear of illness to go to a healthy land. He, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, permitted those suffering from a disease called Aram, when they found Medina bad for their health, to leave and go to Pashtaland. Sixth, leaving from fear of financial harm, since the sanctity of a Muslim's wealth is the same as the sanctity of his blood. As for the division of travelling in search, it subdivides into ten subdivisions, under two main headings, seeking the deen and seeking the world. Seeking the deen has nine types. First, travelling for reflection. Allah exalted as he says, have they not travelled in the earth and seen the final fate of those before them? Indeed, Dhul Kharnain travelled around in the world in order to see its wonders. Second, the journey for Hajj. Third, the journey for Jihad. Fourth, the journey for livelihood. Fifth, the journey for trade and extra earning over and above one's food, which is permissible because of his words, exalted is he. There is nothing wrong in seeking bounty from your Lord. Sixth, seeking knowledge. Seventh, intending to visit honoured places. He said, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Strenuous journeys are not undertaken except to free mosques. Eighth, intending to go to the frontiers for ribat. Ninth, visiting one's brothers for the sake of Allah, exalted is he. He said, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. A man visited a brother of his in a town, and so Allah sent an angel in his path who said to him, where do you intend to go? He said, I am going to see a brother of mine in this town. He said, Do you owe him any favour which you must repay him? He said, No, it is only that I love him for the sake of Allah, exalted is he. He said, Then I am the messenger of Allah to you, with the message that Allah loves you just as you love him. Sahih Muslim Third, the emigration of the tribes to the messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, in order to learn the laws of the Sharia, and then return to their people and teach them. Four, the emigration of one of the people of Mecca who became a Muslim in order to come to the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, 
and then return to his people. Fifth, the emigration from the countries of Kufr to the countries of Islam, for it is not desirable for a Muslim to reside in the abode of Kufr. al Marwadi said, If he acquires family and relatives, and it is possible for him to perform his deen openly, then it is not permissible for him to emigrate, since the place in which he is has become for him an abode of Islam. Six, the Muslim is forsaking his brother for more than three days without a reason in the Sharia, which is disapproved of during the three days, and haram every day beyond that, unless because of an overriding necessity. It has been told as a story that a man forsook his brother for more than three days. So he, his brother, wrote these verses of poetry to him. O oh my master, you have done me an injustice. So seek from Ibn Abi Khaythama a judgment about it, because he narrates from his grandfather, that which ad narrated from Ikrama, from Ibn Abbas, from the Chosen One, our Prophet, who was sent with mercy, that a close friend's turning away from his close friend for more than three days, our Lord has forbidden. Seventh, the husband's forsaking of his wife if her disobedience is a fact. He said, exalted is he, refuse to sleep with them. Of that too is forsaking disobedient people in place, in speech, in returning the greeting, and in opening with a greeting. Eighth, the forsaking of everything which Allah has forbidden, and it is the most general and universal type of hijrah. His saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, so whoever's emigration is for Allah and his messengers, i.e. in intention and purpose, then his immigration is for Allah and his messenger, in judgment and in sharia. Whoever's emigration is for some worldly gain which he can acquire. They transmit that a man emigrated from Mecca to Medina, not wishing by that the excellence of emigration, but only emigrating in order to marry a woman called Umm Qais. And so he was called the emigrant for the sake of Umm Qais. If someone says that marriage is one of the things sought of people in the sharia, so why is it here counted as one of the requirements of the world? Then the answer is, on the outward he didn't emigrate for her sake, but for the sake of performing hijrah, so that when that which he concealed was the opposite of what he made known to people, then he was worthy of reproach and blame. Analogous to that is one who goes out with the apparent intention of performing the hajj, but he really intends to go for trade. Similar to that is one who travels to seek knowledge, and his purpose in that is to obtain leadership or a governorship. His saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, then his immigration is for that which he emigrated, requires that there is no reward for one whose purpose in the Hajj is trade and for visiting. The Hadith has to be interpreted that if the thing which sets him moving and sends him to the Hajj was only the trade, then he has no reward, but if the thing which sends him was the desire to perform the Hajj, then he will have the reward and the trade consequent to it, except that he will have a lesser reward than one who brought himself out for the Hajj alone. If the thing which sent him out on the Hajj was both of them, then it is conceivable that he will obtain the reward, since his travel was not set in motion for the sake of the world. But the opposite is also conceivable, i.e. that he has no reward, since he mixed an action for the next life with an action for the world. However, the Hadith grades the judgment according to the purpose purely, and so it is not true that one who intended both of them, the next life and the world, only intended the world. And Allah, glorious is he and exalted, knows best.